So that's how Michael developed this information. Now, Michael told me in my prison visit with him in January that <clears throat> um, he made every effort to uh, contact authorities, was unsuccessful, and finally his attorney in Chicago uh, was uh, <clears throat> able to write a letter to Colin Powell. He told Colin Powell, Secretary of State, that uh, Michael, he didn't use the name Michael, he said one of his clients, had information about a, a forthcoming terrorist attacks. And it was subsequent to that <coughs> that uh, Michael was interviewed in March of 2001 by an FBI agent. I might also mention that this attorney in Chicago furnished this information to the U.S. attorney and to the FBI in Chicago and had meetings with uh, FBI agents there. So Michael was interviewed by the FBI in March of 2001. And at that time, he told the FBI at Agent Kutry a uh, resident agent out of the Williamsport, Pennsylvania resident agency, that he had information and he furnished the identification of the uh, American, so-called American, but actually was Arab, uh, in New Jersey, who was coordinating forthcoming terrorist attacks on the United States. I'm reading from the report that I did, by the way. Had information on the movement of Soviet-made shoulder-fired missiles into the United States. Was coordinating forthcoming skyjackings was coordinating bombings and espionage, knew the identity of sleepers in the United States and overseas. Michael also told the FBI agent that he had information about 37 Soviet missiles that were to be smuggled into the United States from Bulgaria to Colombia to Canada and, and then to, uh, through a Canadian air firm uh, into uh, the United States. And he told the FBI that there was a 30-hour window when we could have grabbed these missiles. So Michael thought he had done his patriotic duty, furnishing this information to the FBI. And on September the 11th, 2001, he was quite shocked and surprised at uh, the uh, occurrence of 9-1-1. On September the 13th, 2001, he was visited again by Special Agent Kutry of the FBI, and there was another unidentified an identified agent with him. And at that time, Kutri, here's what Kutri said to Reconosudo. <clears throat> he wanted to know why Reconosudo was bothering the FBI and wasting its time. He accused Reconosudo of seeking publicity, accused Reconosudo of being anti-FBI and anti-government, called Reconosudo a conspiracy theorist, called Reconosudo a know-it-all, called Reconosudo a hoaxer and threatened him with prosecution. Now that isn't all. Let me mention this, that shortly after I sent a letter to Senator George Allen of Virginia, and in this letter I asked the Senator to communicate with the FBI and determine the exact date that Michael was interviewed in March 2001. We wanted to verify and we wanted the FBI itself to confirm that they'd interviewed Michael, right, for documentation. Shortly after I sent this letter to the senator, four of Michael's friends who had been in communication with Michael while he was in prison and were not knowledgeable, professionally knowledgeable about terrorism, were contacted by the FBI. The FBI, without search warrants, seized their computers and they demanded all letters, documents, correspondence, books, and so forth and also inquired about the Arabs' contacts of Reconosudo. Those people said that they were more interested in the Arab contacts than they were in any information that Michael had given to them. This information that I'm giving to you is, by the way, is documented, well documented, in Michael's personal letters, in his handwriting. Here's one of his letters. I'll hold this up for you. This is an example. Okay, that's Michael's handwriting. And here is the, uh, one of the letters he wrote to his attorney. And the date stamp on this is uh, February the 6th, 2001. You can see it right up here in the corner. So this information is well documented and as well as uh, uh, establishing through the date stamps, postal stamps, that it uh, is a timely information. I took this report that I compiled as a result of my work with Michael and contacts with Michael. I was in Washington, D.C. for three weeks, and I disseminated this report to every committee on the Hill, 
to 155 congressmen, senators, and also to Mr. Lee Hamilton, who is co-chairman of the President's Commission to Investigate 911. I also had a personal uh, telephone conversation with Mr. Lee Hamilton, and at that time, I said, and this, I sent this uh, January 29, 2003. I said, uh, Michael has considerably more information about terrorist activity than is in my report. For example, he claims to have details concerning the anthrax letters to the Congress. This is my communication to the senator. I was in Washington. I uh, did not have uh, access to a typewriter, so I wrote it in longhand. I also sent a letter to Senator Leahy, New Hampshire, and I gave him the same basic information. <clears throat> and I told him Michael had other information on the 911 attack. And he also knows the identity of the person who has the anthrax letters. Here's my letter or communication to the senator. Okay. And then I took my report and I disseminated it to the U.S. Attorney General of the United States, to Mr. Glenn Fine, Inspector General, U.S. Department of Justice, Tom Ridge, Homeland Security, Roscoe Howard, U.S. Attorney, Washington, D.C., John Keeney, Criminal Division, Department of Justice, John Roberts, Office of Professional Responsibility, Department of Justice, Rob Davis, Office of Intelligence and Policy, Department of Justice, Donald Rumsfeld, Secretary of Defense, the Joint Chiefs of Staff in the Pentagon, Colin Powell, State Department, Intelligence and Research, State Department, CIA, Washington, D.C., Foreign Intelligence Advisory Board, State Department, <coughs> Uh, Kenneth Melson, U.S. Attorney, Northern District of uh, Virginia, the National Security Agency, State Department also, uh, and, and National Security Advisors, excuse me, with the State Department, National Security Council, NSC, the White House, that's the intelligence branch of the President, by the way, Paul McNulty, U.S. Attorney, Alexandria, Virginia, Tommy Thompson, Secretary of Health, and so forth. I took my report also, and I contacted the Washington Post, the New York Times, and the LA Times. I call them the three sisters. And I gave them a copy of the report, and I followed up with a uh, telephone conversation. And I then was lear I learned that uh, they were not going to print the story. I also gave the report to the Associated Press in St. Paul, Minnesota. And this is, uh, I contacted the reporter who has been in touch with Colleen uh, um, Raleigh, the FBI agent who tried to get a search warrant on Missouri and was turned down. And his name is Patrick Cow. And uh, I called him 10 days later and I said, are you going to report my story? And he said, no. And I said, why? He said, because it's too big. It's too big to report. I can't believe it. As a result of, uh, of uh, I'll say, um, uh, stirring up the pot, which is what I did, of course. Uh, we finally received a letter back from the FBI, and this is made it, dated May 22, 2003. And it is signed by Mr. Larry Mefford, M-E-F-F-O-R-D. And in this letter, Mr. Mefford says... Mr. Reconosuto has contacted the FBI on numerous occasions alleging he has information regarding terrorist-related activity that would be of interest to the FBI. On each occasion, the FBI has made every effort to accommodate Mr. Reconosuto and investigate his allegations. Now, hey, wait a minute. Mr. Kutri told Reconosuto when he talked to him September 13th that they did not investigate the allegations as made by Michael Reconosuto because they didn't think he was telling the truth. But now they're saying that they did investigate it. However, at no time has he provided any credible evidence or indication of a federal violation within the investigative jurisdiction of the FBI. Now are they saying that terrorism is not a violation of the FBI within their jurisdiction? Continuing, I won't read the whole letter, but in this letter we finally were able to document that, as a matter of fact, the FBI admits they interviewed Michael on March the 20th, 2001. And in this letter... Uh, the assistant director, Mefford, states that on March 20, 2001, an FBI representative interviewed Mr. Reconosuto 
at the Allenwood Federal Correction Institute concerning his allegations and appropriate steps were taken to investigate his concerns. They were not only his concerns, they were our concerns, the whole country's concerns. However, there was no indication of any violation of federal law within our investigative jurisdiction. I, did you listen to the report, my report of what Michael told me and told the FBI, and now they're saying there's no indication of any violation of federal law within our jurisdiction?